Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel. It is that time again where I talk about all the books that I've read in the month. So August has been a bit of a wishy-washy month. Whilst I have found a lot of books that I really really love, I have had mini reading slumps throughout the month and I have DNF'd so many books now that I can't even remember which ones I DNF'd. I mean, I know I DNF'd Night Circus, but that is the only one I remember. So in August, I participated in three readathons. Two of them were mini, so we're going to start off with the mini readathons. The first one being Polarathon, which ended today. Now, I epically failed this readathon. I didn't read two of the books that I had on my GBR so no I did not save the world in 36 hours. I blew it up at the one book that I did read for that which I finished yesterday on the first day of the readathon is Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. If you don't know what this is let me tell you. So our story begins with a girl in bed and then suddenly she's abducted by aliens and she is stranded on a spaceship and she's in capture with a bunch of other women and they have this shit in a bucket and there are there is a rape scene. I'm just it does start off quite brutally so trigger warning for that but the spaceship actually ends up crashing into an ice planet which is where our story is set and our main girl Georgie is kind of officially appointed the leader of the group so she has to set out on a quest for su survival to basically find help and a way to get all the girls to be warm again because it is icy this planet is torrential snow it is cold everybody's hungry and it's on georgie's shoulders to basically sort that out but while that's happening and i can say this because this is just common knowledge this is the beginning of the story she encounters an alien who greets her <laughs> by giving her oral sex <laughs> I absolutely loved this book and it's insane like I gave it five stars not because the writing is amazing because if I'm being honest it is told like a fanfic like it is <laughs> I'm a bet that this was on Wattpad before it was published because it just it just reads like a fanfic not that there's anything wrong with that because I think we've all written smart before but most people are smart enough to like you know not let the person find it and that's not me <laughs> just for the uh <laughs> just to clarify just to clarify um back in 2015 <laughs> i wrote some smart about a certain band and they found it <laughs> Anyway, enough about my embarrassment. So it does read like a fanfic. If you're not into that, then I wouldn't really recommend picking up this book. I honestly feel like the author had some kind of sexual fantasy dream about aliens and then thought, hey, do you know what would be a good idea? Is if I contact my publisher and get this made into a whole thing. And it became a whole thing because there are like maybe 16 books in this series and I'm gonna read every single one of them because I'm really I really enjoyed it it was so good it's so bizarre and just crazy that it's good it, it's so good it's so it's good <laughs> even the sex scenes it's good so I gave that five stars um I loved it <laughs> Moving on to the A Thousand Door Readathon, there was a free day weekend edition of my personal favourite readathon on booktube and I decided to take part and I had 
full intentions to like not DNF anything but I did end up DNFing two books and I only read one again for that readathon but that one book I am absolutely in love with and it's the first dystopian book I have ever read so now I'm very very keen to not only read more of this lady's books but to read more dystopian in general and that book was The Quiet at the End of the World by Lauren James. <laughs> Five stars. Five brilliant fucking stars. It was so good. So this book is set in a post-apocalyptic post society where a horrible virus basically wipes out fertility and so everyone has to everyone is forced to um put their eggs in the freezer and the sperm um so that the government can release one egg a month or a year something along those lines like i think it was a year so that you know humanity can continue to go on but that was then and this is now we're following the final two young people in the universe and they are coming to terms with their situation and they try to find a way to kind of change things that's all i'm gonna say that is all i'm gonna say but it was five stars and i absolutely just loved it i fell in love with the little companion robot he was so cute look at me i love aliens i love robots i'm a sci-fi whore anyway <laughs> the other readathon that i took part in was the pixar fun i'm gonna link all my vlogs for that below so you can see my my thoughts on all of that fun stuff i'm gonna start off with the book that i hated <laughs> and that was easy classics jane eyre I forgot the author's name. I have forgotten the author's name. So I'm going to, well, I know it's Charlotte Bronte, but it's written by someone else. And it's just, uh, I don't even want to talk about it. I gave it one stars. Classics aren't for me. Not even the easy classics. They're just not, that. No, but just the, the relationship with Mr. Roch, Rochester. Rochester and Jane was absolutely gross <laughs> and I'm just not a Lolita-esque fan I don't like grooming's wrong <laughs> those relationships are wrong and you can't change my mind and I don't like to read about it but yes from the girl that really really loved Cruel Summer this year <laughs> moving on because I hated that the first book I actually read for the readathon is Remember Me by Sophie Kinsella and I actually did the uh, sprayed edges myself, admire my handiwork, I did really well. Um, this, this book is, let me just find that right, so this book is about a woman called Lexi who gets into an accident, hits her head and she wakes up in the hospital thinking that it's 2004. 2004 well she thinks she's 25 but she wakes up like three years later and she can't remember the last three years of her life and this girl is literally married to a millionaire um and she's doing really well at her job she's like the big boss of the whole department and she thinks that she's 25 when she was struggling and she was in a relationship with someone that she didn't really want to be with because he didn't really treat her well and she just remembers those times so she moves back home into her house with her husband to try to like jog her memory and build a life with him and he makes her a manual of their life together and their marriage and everything and it's just it's hilarious i think the prompt i read this for was the monsters inc prompt um a book that will make you laugh because sophie kinsella makes me laugh so yeah 
exactly next book i have is the first day murder club by richard osman osman richard osman i hate thinking of alice Os osman this is richard osman um okay the thing is i just didn't really enjoy this as much as i thought i would this is like i I personally pitched this to myself in the beginning as the elderly a good guys oh, it's two times tonight I'm bulk filming and two times I've messed up a good girl's guide to murder there we go <laughs> um I pitched it as the elderly version of that um yeah <laughs> I gave it three stars but now that I'm sitting here with it and I'm talking about it now <laughs> I want to give it 2.5 it just it wasn't it just wasn't it wasn't for me Mark it wasn't for me in the same vein I obviously really really loved the whole murder books this month and I read The Appeal by Janice Hallett because I saw Chloe from Chloe Reads Books. I love her, she's adorable. <laughs> like I actually, she deserves so many more subscribers. I love this girl so much but I saw her reading this and I thought huh that's a bit of me. Um, it is told entirely through emails and letters and just the multimedia shit I love. I love. It's my favourite part of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, <laughs> the series. And yeah, it didn't disappoint. I did a reading vlog on this and I think I gave it maybe three stars or four stars. I can't really remember. I'll have to fact check myself. But it was pretty good um i did guess one of the big plot points and yeah i mean at the end it just wasn't dark enough for me it just it wasn't dark enough for me i was sat there with she's gonna wear her skin someone is gonna wear someone's skin and that's not what i got i didn't get that i didn't receive that not that I wanted to receive that, but I wanted something in the same vibe as that. Just something more dark. But, yeah, I mean, it it's alright. I will probably pick it up again maybe next year or in a few years' time to see if I have changed my mind. But, I mean, I it, just make it dark. I've, I want to start a new thing in my wrap-ups where I announce my book of the month and the book of the month for august just has to be as good as dead by holly jackson now i don't really know how to talk about this without going all spoilery but i'm gonna try my best okay so this is the final book in the dreaded title a good girl's guide to murder <laughs> trilogy and I, I can't really say anything about this because it's the final book in a trilogy but it was brilliant it was absolutely brilliant I love the way Holly was able to tie all of the three books together in this one she just like she she <laughs> she shocked me this book was a whole fucking shock I was meant to do a reading vlog and I had all plans to do that but just like with the other two <laughs> i just couldn't manage to do it i read i read it pretty much straight away because they're perfect they're just perfect <laughs> i don't know what else to say like i'm so sad that it's over now because I loved it. I loved it. This may just be my fucking book of the year. But Kingdom of the Cursed hasn't come out yet, so I need to hold my horses back a little bit in case in case that becomes my favorite book of the year. 
but right now, as far as I see it, if anything, this is the best mystery of the year that I've read. Yeah, yeah, mystery. Because No Exit is a thriller, and that's my favourite thriller of the year, but this is a murder mystery, and this is my favourite murder mystery of the year. <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm bulk filming, and I'm so tired, and I just want to curl up into bed and read about alien sex. Mm. Oh, uh, okay. With, you know, all jokes aside, all jokes aside, Ice Planet Barbarians is very good. And if you haven't read that, just go do it. Go do it. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And do you know what? You might just get a laugh out of it. <laughs> but yeah, that is the end of this video. Uh, hopefully next month I will have a better reading time. I have a few plans for videos and I have a really cool video coming out on Sunday that I just filmed and <laughs> it's my favourite video I've filmed so far on this channel honestly. It was so much fun. Um... But yeah, that is, um, that's, um, I need to go to bed, so I'm gonna go do that, and I bid you farewell.